The plan was simple. Enjoy a weekend camping trip. We drove up to the national park, our car loaded with camping supplies. We set up our tents in a clearing surrounded by tall pines, the ground beneath us soft with needles. The air was cool and crisp, carrying the faint scent of wildflowers. We gathered wood for a fire. As night fell, while the fire burned, we cooked our dinner over the flames. After eating, we settled around the fire, telling stories and laughing. The flames kept us warm from the chilly night air. The forest was alive with sounds. Crickets chirping, leaves rustling in the breeze, and the occasional hoot of an owl. Around midnight, we decided to turn in. I crawled into my tent, the smell of smoke clinging to my clothes. I lay in my sleeping bag, listening to the sounds of the forest. The air inside the tent was cold, and I could see my breath as I exhaled. I was drifting off to sleep when I heard it. Faint footsteps coming from the edge of the campsite. My eyes snapped open, and I lay still, straining to hear over the pounding of my heart. The footsteps came again, louder this time. I could smell something strange now, a musky, almost rotten odor. I unzipped my tent, just enough to look one eye out. The fire had died down to glowing embers, casting an eerie red light across the clearing. I saw movement near the trees, a shadowy figure just beyond the reach of the light. The footsteps stopped, replaced by an unnatural silence. I felt a surge of fear, my mouth dry and my hands trembling. Mark? Lisa? I whispered hoping they were awake and had heard it too. There was no response. I glanced over at their tents. They were zipped up tight. I considered waking them but hesitated, not wanting to panic them if it was just an animal. I grabbed my flashlight and stepped out of my tent, the cold night air biting at my skin. I pointed the flashlight toward the trees and my blood ran cold. Standing at the edge of the clearing was a figure unlike anything I had ever seen. It was tall, unnaturally so, with limbs that seemed too long for its body. Its skin was pale and stretched tight over its bones, and its eyes glowed with an eerie light. The creature let out a loud growl. I took a step back, my legs shaking. The air seemed to thicken and it was hard to breathe. The smell of the musky creature was suffocating. In a flash, the creature moved, darting closer to the tents. I stumbled backward, nearly dropping the flashlight. The creature's eyes locked onto mine, and I felt a chill run through my entire body. It was as if it was looking into my very soul. The forest around me seemed to blur, and all I could focus on were those glowing eyes. Mark, Lisa, wake up, I shouted, my voice shaking with fear. Their tents rustled, and I heard muffled voices as they woke up. The creature turned its head toward the sound, and I seized the moment. I grabbed a burning stick from the fire pit and thrust it toward the creature. The flames flared, and the smell of burning wood filled the air. The creature hissed, a sound like steam escaping from a boiling pot, and recoiled from the fire. It backed away, its eyes never leaving mine. Mark and Lisa stumbled out of their tents, their faces pale with confusion and fear. What the hell is that? Mark shouted, his voice trembling. I don't know. We need to get out of here, I yelled back, the fear in my voice unmistakable. We grabbed our backpacks and ran, not bothering to pack up the tents. The creature's growls followed us as we fled through the forest, the stench of the musky creaturing lingering in the air. The trees seemed to close in around us, and the darkness was nearly impenetrable. My heart pounded in my chest, and my lungs burned from the exertion. We finally reached the car, and I fumbled with the keys, my hands shaking uncontrollably. We piled in, and I started the engine, the headlights cutting through the darkness. I glanced back toward the forest and didn't see the creature. We sped away. My mind raced, replaying the encounter over and over. We didn't stop driving until we reached the safety of the city. We agreed never to speak of what had happened but the memory stayed with me, haunting my dreams.